Hello, everyone. My name is Georgina Goodwin. I'm Kenyan, and I'm a documentary photographer. Over the last 11 years, I have photographed with many different people and many different places, including Mandela. And I've borne witness to the fast-paced change that this continent is undergoing. One of the things that stands out for me, there is one thing that stands out for me, and that is women, the strength and resilience of Africa's women. It is this that inspires me and encourages me to, that, to believe that this continent has a positive future. It is now more important than ever to bring awareness to the issues that we face through visual storytelling, and no better way to visualize the, the, the Africa's winds of change through the stories of women. So I want to bring with you, show with you today the stories of eight women. This is Rose Kuria. She lives in Bondeni, a low-income settlement which is, with a large Muslim population in Kenya's Rift Valley, Nakuru. As, care, as a project coordinator for the Kenya Council of, Muslim, Kenya Council of Islam, she's a, she oversees the caregivers, a forum for caregivers um, for HIV in the area. Every week, they meet in this dilapidated house and they talk and discuss and find experiences and challenges and find solutions as the only voice for people in this area with HIV. This is Margaret Nagendo. At 87, she lives in rural Kiambu. 45 years ago, she was diagnosed with breast cancer and she has, was given no option to, but to lose her right breast. She's now, she's 15, she has, she has, she's grandmother to 15 children in the area, and she works closely with people in the community who are undergoing their cancer story. With very little, this amazing woman has helped many people in her community and continues to do so as cancer spreads. This is Esther Nakundu. She's 32, and she's sitting outside her home on the slopes of Mount Elgon on the Kenya-Uganda border. This photograph I took one year after her, her successful reconstructive surgery after fistula, which is a hole in the birthing, th birthing canal that happens to women after prolonged labor and can render her incontinent. Women suffering fistula in communities are often ostracized, but Esther has incorporated herself back into the community and is an active member with outreach programs, identifying women who have suffered as she does, as she did. This is Norkochum for Takana on the day that she arrived at Umoja Women's Village in North Kenya's Samburu region. Umoja Women's Village is an all-female village that was founded in 1990 as a sanctuary for survivors of violence against women and for young girls escaping young child marriage, which is a common practice in Samburu culture. Fifteen years on, the women are thriving. It's 50, there are 47 women in the village and 200 children. This is Catherine, also known as Mamushka. She is the only community health worker for 20,000 people in a place called Mugumaini, which is on the edge of Nairobi's famous Kibera slum. And in this Mugumaini area, there are two rapes a day. Mamushka works tirelessly with no help from outsiders to support the women of this village, this slum village, who have been raped. Uh, this is Samoina Moyantet, and she comes from Oloitokitok on the Kenya-Tanzania border. Behind her is Nalepo Church and School, which serves as a, as a meeting place for her self-help group, also called Nalepo, which, works in, uh, which teaches microfinance training and basic economy, economics. It's women like this who are critical in rural and rural African communities as they create space for international partners to come in and bring Africa out of abject poverty. Wangu Kanja was sexually assaulted in 2002. Her, the police re refused to report it as rape and instead recording, recorded it as a robbery. Her rapist was never found and evidence was never gathered. Since, she has started the Wangu, Wangu Kanja Foundation in Mukuru Slum in Nairobi, which helps and gives advice and hope to women who have gone through gender-based violence and rape. She is an activist in Kenya and is helping to shape the way sexual assault is being dealt with in the country. On the steep slopes of Wolo in northern Ethiopia, I met this woman on the way coming back from a well. 
In June 2009, there was, the rains had fell twice and famine was rampant. I handed her a rose as we passed, and she took it to smell. And in her eyes, I saw a world of courage, hope, and beauty, which I'll never forget. The rains did come, and I've never forgotten that woman, or, and I, but I didn't get her name. Through my work, I'm committed to documenting the lives of African women, their joys, and their struggles. It is through their vision that we are able to connect and to help bring about positive change. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Georgina Goodwin. I'm Kenyan, and I'm a documentary photographer. Over the last 11 years, I have photographed with many different people and many different places, including Mandela. And I've borne witness to the fast-paced change that this continent is undergoing. One of the things that stands out for me, there is one thing that stands out for me, and that is women, the strength and resilience of Africa's women. It is this that inspires me and encourages me to, that, to believe that this continent has a positive future. It is now more important than ever to bring awareness to the issues that we face through visual storytelling. And no better way to visualize the, the, the Africa's winds of change through the stories of women. So I want to bring with you, show with you today the stories of eight women. This is Rose Kuria. She lives in Bondeni, a low-income settlement which is, with a large Muslim population in Kenya's Rifali Nakuru. As, care, as a project coordinator for the Kenya Council of, Muslim, for Kenya Council of Islam, she's a, she oversees the caregivers, a forum for caregivers um, for HIV in the area. Every week, they meet in this dilapidated house, and they talk and discuss and find experiences and challenges and find solutions as the only voice for people in this area with HIV. This is Margaret Nagendo. At 87, she lives in rural Kiambu. 45 years ago, she was diagnosed with breast cancer, and she has, was given no option to, but to lose her right breast. She's now, she's 15, she has, she has, she's grandmother to 15 children in the area, and she works closely with people in the community who are undergoing their cancer story. With very little, this amazing woman has helped many people in her community and can 